so you guys remember uh, from last time 5.11 theorem it says the segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle does two things one of them it is parallel to the base or the parallel to the third side and then secondly it is as half as long as the third side this was a, this was an important theorem right because remember when we talked about the uh, trapezoid about the medians of a trapezoid right this theorem told us why the median is of a trapezoid is average of the sum of the bases you guys remember that okay so um, first of all let's first of all figure out why then or think about how you could prove that MN is parallel to BC how would you why would this be true let's think about why this is true first of all so if you have this happening in a triangle if the MN are the, the midpoints of the two sides why should it be parallel to the third side Do you want a hint? Yes. Yeah, what, what do you think, sir? Okay, so do you draw an auxiliary line mm -hmm. through a, point A so it's parallel to MN? But it has three parallel. No, you got the. So, so here's a hint. It's actually, it comes from the previous theorem this way. And that Joshua was trying to describe that a little bit. Do you guys remember this theorem? How is this theorem different than. The one here, they look very similar. Anybody see the difference? So maybe I could show you both. Maybe I could show both of you, both part here. It says a line that contains the midpoint of one side of a triangle and is parallel to the other side passes through the midpoint of the third side. Yes, Grace. Yeah. We we'll get there in a minute. So after we prove this. We'll show you why MN is half of BC. Is that okay? But let's first of all talk about why it is parallel <laughs> to the third side. And my hint is that it actually, you could actually use the previous theorem that states a line that contains the midpoint of one side of the triangle is parallel to another side, passes through the midpoint of the third side. Can it? Anybody see why? Let me ask you one thing. Um, Let's just take a look at this for a second. Um, if, class, that you have a triangle and you have a midpoint of one side, as you can see M right here, and you were to draw a parallel line through M that is parallel to the third side BC, this theorem, what is the end result? It has to go through the midpoint of the, the third side, right? If MN was not parallel, would it go to the midpoint? Could there be another line other than MN that could go through N and M? How many points are there through two points? Exactly one. one. And how many points outside a line that is parallel to that, that goes through that point? There is exactly one, one right? So are there any other line other than MN? No. There will be that is parallel to BC that passes through M. It must pass through M. That's what the end result is, correct? Uh -huh. There is no other point that it could go through other than N on the other side. Would you all agree? I agree. If that's true, what sort of point is N? N is a midpoint, midpoint right? Now let's go back to this. Now I happen to have a triangle. M is a midpoint of one side. N is the midpoint of the other side. How many points are there through MN? There's exactly one. one line. And guess what that line must be? Parallel. If there, It has to be a parallel. Could it not be parallel? No. Because if it's not parallel, guess what? N must not be a midpoint. Look at this theorem right here. Right? Yeah. If that line MN is parallel to BC, it's got to go through that point N, which is the midpoint. Right? And I'm telling you right now, look, what do you think if M is a midpoint of AB and N is a midpoint of AC? This line, MN, has to be parallel, parallel to, to BC. BC from this theorem. Does that make sense? No. No? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Later, we're going to learn this other proof called uh, proof by contradiction. If we do it that way, it would be a lot easier. But I just want to sort of get you... We'll get there later. 
But I just wanted you to understand, does this logically make sense? Because there's exactly one line, right? That is parallel to BC that goes through M, and that one happens to be, goes, that one happens to go through the midpoint of the, the third side. If you have this happening, guess what? MM must be parallel, parallel to BC. BC. Is that okay? Because yeah. if it wasn't parallel, guess what? It cannot go through that and there. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Now then, if that's okay, let's go to the second part. How are we going to show then, if this is true, that MN is parallel to BC, how are we going to show that MN is then a half of BC? And you're going to draw an auxiliary line here. Yes? MB to N. That's one way to do it. Okay, very good. If you want to draw, um, Matt says, why not draw a parallel line through N that is parallel to MB right here? Then you get a parallelogram right here, right? That's one way to do it. Actually, there's an easier way. Could I draw a segment right here that happens to go through the midpoint of BC? Yeah. Here, like this? Yeah. Is that okay? If that happens, nice thing happens. What do you get? Then you get a? Why? Why do you get a parallelogram? I want you to think about that. You're right. If I do this, now we could do it what you said, Madison, but this is a little bit easier. Uh, if I were to draw NN such that N is the midpoint of BC, you get a parallelogram inside, okay? I want you to, as a group, think about why we get a parallelogram right here. Go ahead, I'll give you time. Because that's going to be the key. Because if I know that's a parallelogram, we're done with this part. Why? We could now tell why MN is half of BC. But go ahead and figure out why we have a parallelogram now. Okay, go ahead. All right, so, Reagan, what do you think? What can you say first? If I could show that, first of all, by the way, do you guys see if I could show that M N L B right here? If I could show that that's a parallelogram, right? Do you see why MN will be half of BC? Yeah, why? Because, Leo? Yeah. Because MN is going to be L. Yeah, MN is going to be congruent to BL, and guess what? We, we made L so that L is the midpoint of BC, right? Therefore, MN is going to be half of BC, right? So do you see why if I could show that's a parallelogram, we're done? But the, of course, the problem is, how are we going to show this? Reagan, what would you say? Yeah. Aren't these two parallel? Isn't that what we said in the first part of the theorem? Because M is the midpoint of what? One side. N is the midpoint of the other side. Therefore, MN is going to be parallel to the third side. Okay, that's great. So we have one opposite pair com uh, parallel. But what about the other pair? Yes. Oh, you think this is MB is parallel to... And now also? Yeah. Why? Exactly right. By the way, do you guys see how this is true? Everybody agree with this? Yeah. Now, oh, wait, do, do you see why this is true? Now, here's the trick. I want you to all turn your head this way and think about this as the base of this triangle. Then what is this N? This N is the midpoint of? AC, right? What is this L? Midpoint of BC. Like, think about this as a triangle. Then guess what? This has to be parallel to the third side. Using the same exact idea, same exact theorem. First part of this theorem. You're using the first part of the theorem twice. Go ahead, discuss, see if they get it. Ask your group members. Does that make sense? So, Nico, uh, so let me ask you something. Do you see why MN is going to be parallel to BC? It's because of this theorem that we just talked about, the first part. Do you remember? Sorry, here we go. You got a. Tr Can you read this for us, Nico? Go ahead. We just. Okay, so stop right there. Look, isn't MN the segment that joins the midpoint of the two sides of a triangle? And what is this first part telling us? MN is going to be parallel to BC, right? And we just talked about why, because, you know, we just talked about from the previous one, right? There's exactly one line like that, right? Is that okay? So if N has, and so if that's true, 
then we know that MN is parallel to BC, which is the same as saying MN is parallel to BL, right? Because BL is part of BC. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, what I want you to do is now look at this triangle as sort of rotated. Look, if AB is the base of this triangle, what is this N? N is the midpoint of? AC. What is this L? Midpoint of? Isn't that how we drew that auxiliary line? Yeah. Therefore, guess what this Ln is going to be parallel to? MB or AB, right? Because that's the third side, right? N is the right midpoint of this side, L is midpoint of this side. Do you see what I mean by rotate your head 90 degrees? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So therefore, what do you have here, guys? You have a parallelogram. And what's the nice thing about a parallelogram? Opposite sides are congruent. So what do you know about MN? Can I erase this now that we have no? Okay. What do you know about MN and BL? They're congruent. Right? But what's BL? Isn't BL half of BC? Right? Because L is? What? The midpoint of BC. By midpoint theorem, isn't BL half of BC? Yeah. Therefore, we got ML half of BC. Does that make sense? That's the second part of the proof that MN is half of BC. Does this make sense? Do you understand, guys? Go ahead. See if, ask each other questions. See if they really get it. Go ahead. Oh, wait.